My blackberry cobbler with juice only recipe is easy and delicious. If you love that old fashioned southern flavor, but you don't like the seeds, then this version is just what you want. Let's go over the ingredients. You will need 48 ounces of whole blackberries, 1,360 grams, which is about 10 to 11 cups. I know that's a lot of berries, but since we're only using the juice to make the cobbler filling, we're gonna need to start off with a lot of fruit to make sure we have enough juice. I am using frozen blackberries for 12 ounce bags, but you can definitely use fresh. To add to the filling, we're also going to need some white sugar. I'm gonna start off with half a cup as I measure 105 grams, but I may add some more. I'm also going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and a little bit of extra water. I'm thinking about half a cup. Later on, I'm going to make a cornstarch slurry with three tablespoons of cornstarch, 30 grams, and three tablespoons of water. I'm also going to need some pie crust, two nine inch pie crusts, mine are homemade, but you can use store-bought or your own home recipe if you want. And before I put the cobbler into the oven, I'm going to add a sprinkling of one tablespoon of white sugar and one tablespoon of light brown sugar. The first step in making this blackberry cobbler with juice only recipe is juicing the berries. So like I said, I'm using frozen berries these are thawed. These two other bags aren't thawed quite yet, but I just put these berries in the microwave and now they are thawed. So I am going to juice them by using my immersion blender to break them apart. And then once they're broken apart, I'm going to use my strainer to strain out the juice and throw away the seeds. And I realized that my bowl did not have very high sides, so I transferred the berries to this pot. This is going to be a lot better because if you tried to use an immersion blender to crush the blackberries in a bowl that has low sides like the other one did, you are going to get berry juice all over your kitchen. So I highly recommend using something with higher sides. Now that my first batch of blackberries is crushed, I am straining out the seeds. So here I have a small bowl with a fine mesh strainer over it, and I'm literally just pouring little bits of juice into the strainer at a time and letting the juice drip down. So as you can see, if you literally just pour it in and let it sit, it's going to drain very slowly. So I recommend taking a spoon and agitating it like this. That's why it's best not to fill the strainer up to the top with juice. Leave a little bit of room so that when you do stir it, you don't make this pulp go over the edge. As you can see now that I'm stirring it, it's draining a lot faster. This is kind of tedious and time consuming, but it's necessary. I guess you could use store-bought blackberry juice, but honestly, I would not because I think this way of doing it is gonna give you more pulp in the juice. Because as you can see here, there is a little bit of pulp that makes its way through the strainer. The strainer isn't perfect. And that's actually what you want because if you use a perfectly strained juice like store-bought orange juice with no pulp, I think the filling wouldn't have the right texture. It would be kind of like jelly. And it wouldn't have the mouthfeel that cobbler filling usually does. So I think by making blackberry juice the hard way, the long way, is the way you want to do it. Because like I said, you're going to get those fine pieces of pulp that make their way through this strainer and it's gonna give your filling more body. 
that's about as much juice as we're gonna get out of this. So I'm gonna scrape off anything that's clinging to the bottom. And then put the seeds off to the side and keep straining. I just finished straining all of the blackberry juice and I have a little under four and a quarter cups of juice. As you can see, this juice has a lot of body to it. Even though there aren't any seeds in it, there are little bits of pulp that are really going to give the filling a nice texture. Now it's time to cook the blackberry juice a little bit. Here I have my pot. I'm just going to pour in my blackberry juice. Like I said, four and a quarter cups. And as I'm pouring it in, you can see the nice pulp, a little bit of pulp that got into the juice. So I'm gonna start off with half a cup of sugar, 105 grams two tablespoons of lemon juice, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, just to balance out all the flavors. Mix that together. I just tasted the blackberry juice and it's not really sweet at all. So I have another half a cup of white sugar. So I'm gonna add a little bit and taste it as I go probably add maybe two to four tablespoons at a time to see where I want it to be. And even though I went back and forth, I think I am going to add a half a cup of water because as I bring this to a boil, some of the liquid is going to evaporate off and I don't want to lose a lot of volume. So I am going to turn the heat up medium or high, it doesn't really matter. We just need to bring it to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, I'm going to continue cooking it, but on medium. I've been boiling my blackberry juice for 10 minutes. The first five on low and the second five on medium. Gas mark three out of six. And now it's time to make the cornstarch slurry. This is my first time making blackberry cobbler with juice only, so we'll see how this turns out. I am going to make the slurry off to the side, three tablespoons of cornstarch and three tablespoons of water. 30 grams of cornstarch and a little over 30 grams of water. Turn the heat down as low as it can go. Just going to mix the water and cornstarch together. I am mixing the cornstarch and water off to the side because cornstarch does not like to be added to hot liquids. If I just threw it in there, it would not turn out. So I have to mix the cornstarch into water off to the side. go. Now with the heat on low, I'm just going to pour this in, stir, and then see if it thickens. I may have to add a little bit more. We'll see. See it thicken. It has thickened a little bit, but I think I'm going to need a little bit more cornstarch. So I'm gonna start off with another extra tablespoon of cornstarch and another extra tablespoon of water. Like I said, I added four tablespoons of cornstarch and four tablespoons of water to make the slurry. It's not quite as thick as the filling is from my other cobblers, but that's okay. I don't wanna to add too much cornstarch because 
I don't want it to taste chalky. Now it's time to start assembling the cobbler. Here I have my bottom crust in an 8x8 casserole dish. My oven is preheating to 350, so I'm literally just going to take a fork and prick it in a couple places, maybe 7 to 10 places. And now I'm going to bake this without anything in it in the oven at 350 for 5 minutes just to par bake the bottom so that it doesn't get soggy. Now that the bottom crust is par baked and is cooled off a bit, it's time to pour in the filling and put on the top. So here I have my filling. I'm literally just going to pour it in to the bottom crust. Although I guess you could do a solid top, I think strips are going to be better because it's going to allow a little bit more of the liquid to evaporate and thicken the filling. So that's what I'm going to do. I am going to first cut the edges around my pie crust so that it has square edges. I probably should actually have done this before I poured in the filling, but that's okay. One thing you can do is take these little pieces of dough and put them into the filling if you want to make it kind of like dumplings. The dumplings in Southern Style Cobblers, if you're not familiar with them, are literally just small pieces of dough in the filling. Some people like them, some people don't. They really just add a different texture and I think as the flour comes off of them, they help thicken it a little bit. I normally add the dough around the edge of the square that I cut as dumplings. So I'm going to do that in this cobbler. I think it's going to be good, especially for this one because the filling is so runny because I'm only using the juice, but some people don't like the texture. You do whatever you want. Like I said, I, I think this is probably a good idea, but if you don't like the idea of little pieces of dough in your filling, just leave them out. It's going to mix them in. Like I said, I probably should have added them to the pot before I poured in the filling, but this blackberry cobbler made with juice only recipe is really easy and forgiving. Now let's get to cutting the strips. I am literally just going to cut straight down like this. And I'm going to pick them up and lay them across the top. This I'm going to reach over my knife. I'm literally just going to lay the strip of dough on top. You could start right up against the side. You could put some space over there. It doesn't really matter what you want to do. I am going to leave some space this time. that and I put the strips one strip length apart usually this filling is way too runny to try to weave them together I think to weave the strips of pie crust together so I think you're much better off just laying the strips over the top it just needs one final touch so here I have one tablespoon of light brown sugar and one tablespoon of white sugar. I'm just going to sprinkle them over the top. I'm trying to 
aim for the pie crust, but if some falls into the filling, that is okay. The one thing I highly recommend with especially this recipe is that you bake it on top of something because if this boils over, you do not want it to get under the bottom of your oven. So I am going to use a pizza pan. Really just gonna put this on top of a pizza pan. Now it's ready for the oven. I just pulled my blackberry cobbler with juice only out of the oven. It was in a 350 degrees Fahrenheit uncovered for 45 minutes. Four five. With the golden brown crust and dark purple filling, this blackberry cobbler looked like the classic southern dessert that we all know and love. However, since the filling was a little bit different, I was very curious to see how it tasted. And when I took the first bite, I knew that my blackberry cobbler with juice only recipe was a big success because it was absolutely delicious. The filling was full of blackberry flavor, but without the bitterness or grittiness of the seeds. It had that very nice balance between sweetness and tartness that you normally find in this dessert. And like I said, since there wasn't that bitterness in the background, the sweet and tart contrast came through even stronger. I really like the filling's texture as well. As you can see, the filling was not nearly as thick as most of my cobbler fillings are. I had to scoop out some of the juice at the bottom, but that didn't bother me. I wouldn't call the filling soupy or watery. It was definitely thicker than a normal juice would be, but if you like cobblers that hold their shape when you cut slices, this recipe would not be for you. The thick syrup balanced perfectly with the crispy, crunchy crust on top, as well as with the dumplings that were inside of the filling. The sugar that I sprinkled on top added a touch of extra sweetness and a nice crunch that added even more texture. So even though this cobbler didn't hold its shape as well as most of my others do when it was cut, I was fine with that because it tasted great and the textures combined very nicely as well. I guess you could add more cornstarch or use some other type of thickener if you wanted to, but honestly, I don't think it's realistic to have a cobbler filling made with juice to be as thick as a normal apple cobbler would be or a blueberry cobbler or peach cobbler. I think you just have to accept the fact that this is going to be loose. It's going to fall apart because, like I said, it's made out of juice. And even though this dessert was perfectly flavorful on its own, it was very good with ice cream as well. If you don't like ice cream, you could go for whipped cream, Cool Whip, maybe even just some cream drizzled over. You could eat this a lot of ways. If you follow my channel, you know that I've made a lot of versions of blackberry cobbler over the years, and this one, made with juice only, was probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Although this recipe was a big success, I would have to say the main downside is that it is pretty time consuming crushing the berries and straining them by hand. So I think a good compromise would be using the same amount of berries as in this recipe, but using half whole and half juiced. And now that I think about it, that might end up being even better than this version because although this was very good and I liked it a lot, part of me thought that it was a little bit on the sweet side. Maybe using less sugar would be better, but I think a little bit of bitterness from some of the seeds would help to balance out the sweetness and tartness very well. Like I already said, this seedless blackberry cobbler made with juice only recipe was a big success. If you like blackberries but you hate the seeds, then this is definitely a recipe you need to try. It is a bit of work, but if you just cannot stand seeds, it's one to try. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.